Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. We're so delighted that you've joined us today. I'm George Cope and it's going to be my privilege to be your host for the next 30 minutes as we talk about what God is doing in our community in Central Florida as he is talking and helping people to find their way through life and their journey. And today's subject is a subject that everybody has interest in. We're going to talk about the family. And so I would encourage you to just uh, take, sit down, and be prepared to learn how you can be a better parent, you can be a better mate, uh, you can be a better child. Uh, it would not hurt if you've got your kids in the room. Sit them down and let's talk together. And I'm so grateful that uh, I have with me someone that I can declare has a great sense of education, background, and training in that. It's my privilege to welcome Scott Welch to be with us today. Scott, welcome to you, Joy George. in Our Town. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Scott, it's nice to have people like you uh, that have your licensed mental health counselor with, uh, with Karis Counseling Center. You hold a master's degree in divinity, so that means you've pastored as well as you have a degree in counseling. And you are a mediator approved and licensed through the Supreme Court of the state of Florida. You've got some credentials. And uh, we are glad that you can talk to us about some issues today that I think are really important. The family is, uh, is such an incredibly large area that I think one of the things that that Central Florida and Orlando is known for is this whole idea that we attract young families. Mm. Did you know we're the, uh, we're the youngest demographic? We have the t only 10% of the population of Orange County is over the age of 60. Wow. So we have a lot of young families in our community. The challenge of parenting. Mm. When you think of parenting, uh, give us your understanding. What, what, when you say the term parenting, what comes to your mind and what do you find is just the whole mindset when a person thinks, wow, I'm a parent, I've got children. Yeah. Well, what's the big issues that come out of that? Well, parenting, first of all, you know, when I think about parenting, there's just challenge. I mean, there's unbelievable challenges in, in being a parent. But I want to step back from that a little bit because a parent uh, kind of denotes family, right. right? And family would be the first institution that God established, right? When we read the scripture, I mean, it wasn't necessarily the church. It wasn't uh, other things. It was the family, right. right? He created the family. And so there's, there's unbelievable challenges, and especially in our culture today, uh, that come about for parents. Um, a lot of times, I think parents have the idea that what I want to do is get my child to do the right thing, act the right way, be the right person, decide the right things. And really, I think our role as a parent, one of the greatest challenges is how do I usher my child into the presence of God? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I bring them into the presence of God? Because ultimately we want them to trust and rely on God and his leadership in their life, right? Not That's just, not just mine. That's right. But, and so when people or parents would hear that, because I think they think more to the first part, trying to get my child to do the right thing. Uh, when a parent wants to begin the process of helping their children to know God, how would you advise someone to go about that process? Well, I think, uh, you know, something that we talk about all the time, the, the number one thing is just modeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as my children watch me, do they see me rely on my bank account, my job, my, my friends, or do they see me rely on God? You know, do they see me spending time in his word or do they see me uh, spending time other places? You know, do they see me developing the tools that I need to walk with God each day or do they see me just going to God in times of crisis? Mm -hmm. And so the first thing would be modeling. Yeah. Um, the second thing really is about how we encourage um, our children because a lot of times uh, we only encourage our kids when they do the right thing and they give the right answer. And sometimes we need to encourage, there's been a lot of studies on this, encouraging uh, for the right effort and for the right um, desires and for the right, you know, I'm motivation. struggling hard on this yeah. motivation, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's great. I, I think that um, family prayer is another thing that is, you know, we're of a generation that comes from a background and a past that we just, we talked about things very differently. Do you find that parents today it's easy to pray with their children. Do you encourage that in your counseling practice? If you did, how would you sort of, again, 
take and help a family to understand, okay, we believe in God, we believe that prayer is important, how would we go about having a family prayer time together? Yeah, that's a great question because a lot of times what happens is people compartmentalize their life, right? right. And their spiritual life becomes, well, we have family prayer time instead of integrating that prayer into their life. I can remember uh, when I was in college, you know, my parents helped me with college and then I went to graduate school and that help kind of stopped. And uh, I had always gone in the summers to work at a camp and I remember that... Uh, it was looking by my finances that I wasn't going to be able to make it to that camp this summer. And I remember sitting down with my dad and saying, Dad, uh, what can I do? Hoping my dad would say, well, I can just stroke a check for you, right? <laughs> but he didn't say that. He said, well, why don't we pray about this together? And, um, you know, you pray about it. And let's just see where the Lord, you know, directs you. And so he brought that prayer into a real practical time in my life. It just wasn't a you know, after dinner, we have family right. prayer time, you right. know. So are we uh, sharing with our children in the various stages? I think the scripture, you know, it teaches us when we rise up, when we lie down, when we walk sure. along the way, right? In the book of Deuteronomy, that right. we should always be bringing the things of the Lord uh, into our kids' lives, not compartmentalize our faith. Yeah. How well do you think the church is doing in this whole idea of parenting? I mean, it, it's a big subject that's out there. But do you find that the, just because it's an issue we're addressing that people are really trying to help support within congregations uh, the family and provide the kind of resources that they need? You know, George, I, there's a ton of resources out there, and I think the church is doing a fairly good job of, of putting those resources out. But unfortunately, it's like with everything else. When people come to my office, it's at a time of crisis. Right. Right? It's a time when I don't know what to do anymore. You know, I've, I've tried everything. It's a time of crisis. So instead of people saying, hey, um, I have children. They didn't come with an owner's manual. I, I ought to learn what God says about this. I ought to learn some, some steps and some skills and, and being a mom and being a dad. Um, we go to the doctor in times of crisis, but we also go to the doctor for physicals, right? Checkups, right. that sure. kind of thing. So I think the, the struggle is that a lot of times as parents, we don't take advantage of the opportunities that are out there, whether they're things the church is offering or whether it's even saying, you know what, I'm just going to see a counselor a couple times a year just to, uh, you know, see if, if that works. We have uh, an inventory in our office that we give on parenting that shows parents how they communicate as parents, how they um, lead as parents, how they, you know, how their spiritual impact is as parents. It's a, it's a real great deal, but it's those kind of opportunities that people have to take yeah. advantage of. I, uh, I think that in talking with people about parenting, if you ask them, do you want to be a great parent? Everybody's going to raise their hand. They want to be a great parent. What keeps a person from being a great parent? I'm going to answer that in one word. Okay. I'm going to say selfishness. Wow. To be really honest, selfishness. Thinking about ourselves, um, that pushes God out of the way. Um, not thinking about, hey, as a parent, I have a God-given role here. You know, I have, a, I have a role that God has entrusted me with. And he's not asking me to take his place, but he is asking me to lead these children into the presence of God. I mean, train them up in the way they should go, right? And uh, then they won't depart from, from his ways. So, uh, I, I don't want to leave that from it because I think that you, you struck a, a nerve here, it, at least in my thinking in the process. Selfishness, uh, we understand conceptually what that means. If I am selfish, oftentimes I'm the last one to realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, so how would you, how could families bring the subject of selfishness up? Because the whole idea of family is time and involvement to make sure that we keep ourselves honest mm -hmm. and we keep ourselves confronted with good um, parameters so that we don't get that way. What would you advise a family that says, hey, Scott, we, we get selfish from time to time. Help us to know how to uh, hold ourselves accountable and the family so that we can give rather than just be takers. Right. Well, first of all, let me step back and say that there's, there's a difference between selfishness and taking care of yourself. Okay, that's and, that's, and that's real important because a lot of times people fall in the trap where they never take care of themselves because they think it's selfish. But Jesus even said, love your neighbor 
as yourself, right? We've heard a lot of messages on how to love our neighbor, not too many on how to take care of ourselves. So the first thing is, I want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself because you can't give to anyone, you can't lead anyone from an empty well. So are you taking care of yourself? That would be the first question I'd ask. The second question I'd say is, well, let's just look at your calendar. Let's mm. just look at your checkbook. I mean, where, where do your children, your family time, where does that fit in there? I mean, some of us are really busy people. I know we have busy schedules, but have we plotted out those times that we're going to, you know, really pour into our kids um, and really give them time? So that, those would be two things I would suggest. Good. Good. Well, I hope that you're paying close attention. Well, you've joined us if you've just come in. This is Joy in Our Town. We're just talking about issues that uh, the people that live here in Central Florida are dealing with. And we're so delighted to have Scott Welch with us, who is a, a, uh, a certified Christian counselor. He's a pastor. He's got a heart to help to uh, encourage the church and the people of God. And that's what TBN is all about. We're wanting you to be the very best person you can be in your faith for Jesus Christ. And that's why this station exists, and that's why this program is here. Hey, Scott, just before we take a break, I, I want to ask you, here's, here's a big one. I'm a grandfather, so I understand this challenge, but how can parents encourage kids to be self-motivated? I, I've got one grandchild, and I hope they're not watching, one grandchild that you never have to say they're motivated. But I got two that find that challenging. How would you help me to help my grandkids or parents to make sure that their kids find motivation? Well, this is going to sound really strange, but let me tell you, there was a study done out in Southern California by a woman by the name of Carol Dweck, a great psychologist woman. She took 400 students and she gave them a test. And she didn't care how they did, but she took half of the students and told them how smart they were and how great they were. And she took the other half and just told them how hard they worked. And she praised the process. This one, they, she praised the result. The ones that she praised the result, as they studied them, their effort, their motivation went down. The ones where they praised the process and just their digging in and their struggle, they wanted bigger challenges. They wanted to take things that they thought they might even fail at because they were excited about the process. See, when you praise the result, they're saying, hey, I don't want to work too hard because I, I got to win. You know, I got to be good. So I would say praise the process. Praise their effort. I mean, praise what you see them doing uh, in a real positive way. That's great. You know what? We're going to have to take a very quick break. So I want you to stay with me for just a few more minutes as we continue to talk to Scott. But I want you to just pay attention of what God is doing right here in Central Florida through TBN. We are so delighted you're with us today on Joy in Our Town. We'll be right back. You stay with us. And Scott's going to keep talking about how to have a great family. Hi, I'm Josh Temple. You might have seen me on TV where I help folks turn their houses into dream homes, but I don't do it alone. I have help. Raising kids is the same. So when I have questions, I trust the experts at Boys Town. These experts are online at boystown.org and they have advice to help you handle just about every parenting situation. Forget construction. Parenting is the toughest job there is. For services available near you, call Boys Town or visit boystown.org slash Central Florida. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope. It's been my privilege to be with you for about a half an hour, and uh, we've got a little bit more time to go, and it's a privilege to have Scott. Scott, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we've been talking about the family and the challenges that people face in parenting. Um, but God's Word, and we've got our Bible out because TBN is about God's Word and finding answers in this book. So it's laying open here because this is where truth comes from. So... I'm going to ask you a pretty big question, a loaded question, and I know you're a pastor, and I'm not looking for a sermon, but I am looking for a direction, okay? What is God's role for parents? If we go back to this book, what would God tell moms and dads that their role is as a parent? Well, um, quickly, I'd go to the word where it says, train up a child in the way it should go. And what's interesting about that verse is... Um, Sometimes we think we know the way the child should go, right? So we have that all figured out, and we're going to train them that way. But what's interesting about that verse, it's kind of a, an agricultural kind of words in there where it's saying, you know, a, a, a tree can kind of grow in some different directions. Mm. So, so children are different. And uh, 
So I think my role is that, first of all, I have to be worried about myself, right, and where I am in my walk with God, and that I'm walking faithfully with God so that when I'm with my children, I'm ushering them into the presence of God, and thus they can be trained up in the way that God wants them to go. So my role as a parent is to stay faithful in my walk with God and to bring my children in the midst of that. Now, let's, let's jump because I know people that are listening to us, they're saying, well, are they going to talk about me? We have the, the nuclear family, which means that was sort of the traditional mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Today, we've moved into a role where we have what many people have heard is a blended family. Mm -hmm. But would you give us sort of the professional definition? And let's talk for a few moments about the challenges of a blended family. So help us to define blended family and then let's talk for a few moments about that. Sure. So a blended family would be uh, a family that might be on the other side of divorce, a uh, family that might be on the other side of loss, uh, maybe some a, a spouse died, or maybe one of the spouses is getting married for the first time and the other has experienced one of those two things. And they're coming together in marriage and they're going to blend uh, their children into this family. Maybe they have, uh, they each have children. Some couples will have children now together. And so it's just a matter of bringing this, uh, these two families, if you will, together and, and, and blending them and making that work. So why is it so challenging for blended family? I mean, it's challenging to be a nuclear or to be a husband and wife married and, and grow your family up. What becomes the big issues of blended families? Well, blended families have, honestly, some of the same issues as nuclear families. Um, they just intensify a little bit. So issues like finances. I mean, who is going to pay for what in the children's lives? Uh, the second thing would be discipline. Okay. Okay. Who, how are the children going to be disciplined? Am I going to discipline all the children or just my children, your children? How's that all going to work? Um, I had a family that came to see me the other day, and they had different rules about video games and how much you could play and when you could play and how you couldn't play. And they were having a hard time blending that and making that work for this new, new family. Okay. So just how that would all work out. Yeah. I, I think that um, we, we just sort of assume that when you get married, everybody's in love. You know, I mean, we're going to be happily ever after. I mean, come on, we live in, in Orlando, the home of Disney, where everything ends happily ever after, right? But it's just not the way it is. The whole idea of... I think Christian counseling is that for many years, it got a bad rap. Mm -hmm. uh, people sort of looked at counseling as you're not trusting God. Mm -hmm. Why would people want to come to someone like yourself mm -hmm. and spend time talking with you? Mm -hmm. um, that's a great question. And it does kind of, kind of get a bad rap because another part of that bad rap is you go to counseling when you're kind of a mess. And if you're really following God, you wouldn't necessarily be a mess. Right, right. Well, sometimes we just need a little help and direction. You know, sometimes we just need uh, to know uh, whether to go to the right or, or, or to the left. Um, I have people that come to me sometimes and just having some anxiety issues, you know, some things they're afraid about, and they just need to see clearly in God's Word um, how they can capture those things and, and let, you know, Christ own those thoughts, right? Um, but families especially... There are families, there are skills that we need in our family, skills like communication, skills like resolving conflict. And those are things that are learned. It's like riding a bike. Uh, we have to learn how to do those things. We just assume that that happens. When it doesn't happen, we know. But we don't take the time to prepare ourselves for that happening. So coming to a counselor just to say, hey, we want to we wanna hone our skills in communication. We want to get better at resolving conflict as a family. It's just a really healthy thing. It's like a wellness then. We go to a physician once a year for our annual checkup just to make sure that we're doing well. So you're saying it's not wrong or it would be healthy if before issues come for them to actually seek out that kind of help to do that. Um, you, and, you, and let me add this, George. Okay. We, we have so much stuff coming at us every day. Yes, Okay. for sure. I mean, I'm a counselor. I go to counseling at least four times a year, <laughs> right? Just to, just to clear my head, just to, just to make sure, hey, am I on the path where God wants yeah. me to be? Yeah. 
I, and I, again, no one believes, both you and I are ordained ministers, so we believe this book. Absolutely. I think that there's one of the things that I, I think people have a preconceived notion that somehow when I come to Jesus, that all of these other issues in my life, I can work them out just me and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met anybody like that? Oh, yeah. Um, talk to me about that because, I, again, I do not discredit. You know, you would know, and, and our viewers would know, we believe that this is the book and this is right. God and I can make things work, but, but we still need support, and I think that's where we miss. Am I right? That, Absolutely. So for a person that may say, but George, if I go to a counselor, am I, am I somehow defaming God in my life? Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person? Um, I would say, first of all, let's look at the example of Jesus. Jesus had 12 disciples, right? He had people that he poured his life into. And in fact, the scripture calls us to be disciple makers. And so I would say to people, who is pouring their life into you? And I find that most people that are believers don't have somebody like that, or that somebody that's pouring life into them. And so a counselor might be somebody that you can go to and say, hey, here's what I'm struggling with, and allow them to share from God's word and share from um, knowledge and understanding that God has given them to, to help you in that. Um, the other thing that I would say, though, to, to somebody that said, you know, am I defaming God or my faith? I mean, God has created us for connection mm. with people. I mean, we desperately need that. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another, right? I mean, we desperately need that kind of connection. He didn't ask us to come to faith, to believe, and, and be a solo, you know, it's not a solo sport, yeah. right? Yeah. No man is an island, as exactly. somebody wrote, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I would agree with you, because I, I think we've all been there. Uh, I can say as a pastor in my own life that I've reached moments of great lows and I needed someone to talk to, and I'm not ashamed of that. Because, I, again, all truth is God's truth. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to talk to me from God's Word, God's going to use your circumstances, your life, your experiences mm -hmm. to help me navigate my life, my experiences, and my journey in life. And I think that, that that's very encouraging, and I want to... I want to encourage our viewers to, to be very sensitive to that, that you may need someone. Do not feel as though your faith is being neglected or that somehow you're going to embarrass God if you seek help and, and you reach out for support in a counseling environment that God wants. And I, I'd add one other thing to that too, George, that you know I, I've been a pastor for 17 years. I went back and got a counseling degree and got a counseling license. It's called a mental health counseling license. There are mental health issues that as a pastor, I wasn't trained in. Well, as a Christian counselor now, I have that foundation of my faith and understanding of, you know, who God is and who man is, right? Mm -hmm. And I can bring um, some truth from God's word into those mental health issues that um, I think are, is really important at times. Scott, we're, uh, we're winding down, and again, um, TBN is known for this book. I mean, th they have preached now for nearly five decades the, 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 the uncompromising Word of God, and, and you and I stand upon this. Um, I, before we leave, I want you to just take a few moments and, and talk to folk. As a man that would say, if you only had one last message that you could share with our viewers and your life was going to be over, and you, you felt like of all the things that you've learned and all the things that you know that have been beneficial and helpful, would you share that just sort of as a, as a counselor, as a, as a pastor, as a friend? Talk to our viewers just for a few moments about how this book and their faith can make a difference in their lives and their family and in their, their life's journey. Sure. You know, as you've been listening today, we've been talking about family, and, and you might be in a situation where you feel like there's no way out. It's a dead end. I'm, I'm doomed. Um, I, I, there's just nowhere I can go. I want to tell you that we have a God of hope, and we have a God of grace, and we have a God of mercy. And this book, um, his word to us, this love letter to us, reveals all of that to us, and it tells us exactly that he gets the last move. And uh, he will 
reach into your life. There is hope for your life. There's hope for your family. And uh, it is on every page of this book. And so I would tell you to reach out uh, to someone for some help, to a pastor, to a counselor. Um, just, just do that today. Don't ever feel like you're at a dead end because God reveals to us in his word that there is not a dead end in his plan. Encouraging words. Uh, I, I don't for a moment believe, Scott, that people have turned, tuned into this program today, whether it be during the day or maybe replayed at some other point, who knows, but that you are not here by accident. You are here by divine purpose. And so, please, before we have to say goodbye, would you pray for those that may be listening that say, you know, Scott, you touched, uh, you touched a nerve and I'm hurting there. Maybe it's a blended family. Would you just lead us in prayer just before sure. we have to say goodbye to these folk for this week? Absolutely. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we give you praise for this time. And I thank you, God, for who you are, the sovereign Lord. And Father, I know there may be one out there right now listening that's just struggling with whether their family will survive. That's just struggling with a child that uh, just seems to be making some bad choices after bad choices. And Lord, I pray that you would touch their heart, that you would touch their lives, that you would show them your purpose and your plan. And Lord, I pray that you would give them the courage to reach out to someone that um, can usher them into your presence, that they can feel your peace and your direction, your love and your grace and your mercy. And so, Lord, we give you praise for all of that. And I just ask you to come and be real to these families right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Scott, thank you for spending time with us today. Absolutely. Thank you for helping Central Florida really address the issues. You know, friend, uh, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So I would encourage you as we are having to say goodbye to make a declaration that for you and your house, this book and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to be your God. And if you will make that decision and begin to take the steps to work toward that relationship being developed, you will find that God will meet you in your home and your home will be different. So I want you to know that TBN believes in you. I want you to know that this station is here to encourage you. Please stay faithful to watch us and be a part. We'll meet you back here next week for another version of Joy in Our Town so that you can celebrate what God is doing. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.